In today's video, you'll discover the ninth episode of One Year to Beat the Stock Market Performance, where I'll share with you my full stock portfolio performance over the last month. But as always, just before to start, let's make a quick recap of what were my initial objectives when I first started this challenge. Obviously, my first objective is to aim for as much growth as possible to be able to beat the stock market performance. But at the same time, I love having great defensive stocks in my portfolio to protect myself against time of high volatility on the market. After, obviously, I'm trying to diversify better in my portfolio, even though I currently have three big sectors in it, which are the tech, the financial, and the real estate. But at the same time, that means that I want to have different companies in sectors where I don't currently have a lot of different companies, such as the real estate, the materials, and the consumption sectors. And obviously, my big goal is to be able to beat the stock market performance over the length of one year. Now, let's see what has been my stock portfolio performance over the month of April 2022. As you can see, the first thing that you can notice in my portfolio is that I currently sit on quite a lot of cash because as you might know, I am currently saving as much as possible to be able to reinvest all this money into real estate properties. But now let's make a quick breakdown of my overall portfolio sector by sector. As you can see, one of the best performers within the technology sector in my portfolio has been Meta over the last nine months, which has gained close to 50% of value during that period. Unfortunately, after you can see that my two electric vehicle companies, which are Tesla and NIO, haven't been able to perform quite well during that period, as well as my small position in Rumble, which haven't been able to perform quite well. After, in terms of my three energy companies, you can see that both my oil companies, so Enbridge and Pemina, have been doing pretty okay, notably knowing the fact that those companies are giving some great dividends pretty much every single quarter. But unfortunately, my green renewable energy, Algonquin, hasn't been able to perform well during that period. Jumping out to the financial sector, you can see that both Manulife and RBC have been performing quite well over the last nine months. But you can see that both the TD Bank and the Nova Scotia Bank haven't been able to perform well. On its part, my consumption company Kushta has been doing pretty great with a return of close to 15%, as well as my material company Savaria, which has been close to 25% of return. Finally, one of my biggest positions in my portfolio, Raul Khan, has been doing pretty good over the last 9 months where it has gained close to 6% of gain, which obviously doesn't include its massive dividends. And finally, my small position in 5 and plus has been doing amazing during that period with some return of close to 90%. So over the last 9 months, my portfolio performance has been of 1% or if you prefer, about $880 of gain. Obviously, this doesn't include all the dividend income that I've made throughout many different stocks. But nevertheless, I'm pretty close to $90,000 of value only with my stock portfolio. But now, let's compare my stock portfolio performance with the overall market performance for that same period. Once again, to illustrate the market performance, I'll be using the S&P 500 which is an index composed of the 500 largest American companies on the stock market. And so, while we can see that this index is currently worth about 4,167 points and that at the beginning of September, so on the 1st September, it was about 3,966 points, we can see that over the last couple of months, it has gained close to 5% of value. So even if I am not including the dividend income and the dividend return in my total performance, you can see that I am slightly underperforming the market at the moment. And when we take a look at the sectoral distribution of my portfolio, you can see that I have two big tilts which are in the financial and in the technology sectors, which are obviously followed by the real estate sector with my big position in Raokan, and after you have the energy sector with Enbridge and Pembina notably. And finally, you can find the communication followed by the materials and the consumption sectors. And I obviously doesn't really have much liquidity into the services, the others, and also the healthcare sectors. Finally, for the different transactions that I've made throughout the month of April 2023, you can see that I basically buy only different technology stocks with Tesla and Meta. But on your side, if you're looking to see what are the best stocks that you can buy right now in May 2023, well, check out the video that's going to be right over here and I will see you soon. Peace.